A distinctive fish endemic to Lake Natron cannot be found anywhere else in the world. In Africa's Great Rift Valley, on the border of Kenya and Tanzania, lies a mysterious, toxic lake. Lake Natron is red from salt-loving organisms and algae. The water reaches hellish temperatures, and its chemistry is similar to ammonia. Lake Natron is a very hostile environment, and it's become hostile in a very short space of time. Water flows in, but doesn't flow out, so it can only escape by evaporation. But somehow, despite the deadly conditions, a few species manage to do more than just survive. They thrive. It's really interesting that in the last 10,000 years since the lake has become so hostile, these species have been able to adapt to that. It smells, it's hot, the water is disgusting, it's muddy, but at the same time, it's beautiful. Why is this African lake so inhospitable? And what kind of creatures manage to call it home? Lake Natron covers an area of around 600 square miles, but it never gets deeper than 10 feet, and that's during the rainy season. Rising above the flat landscape, is O.L. Donyalengai, an active volcano that erupts a few times per century. About 10,000 years ago, volcanic debris was washed down the slopes of the mountain by heavy rainfall and formed Lake Natron. O.L. Donyalengai is unusual because the lava that spills out is rich in sodium and potassium. Eruptions are much slower and cooler so they create a unique volcanic landscape and infuse the waters with poison. The water is twice as salty as seawater, and the salt crystallizes and forms trona deposits on the surface of the lake. Scientists actively study the conditions of Lake Natron. It's very shallow. It's very hot, huh? Very hot. Maybe really there. Be deep enough, yeah. Temperature is 42 mm -hmm. on zero. The salinity is 70 mm -hmm. uh, PSU, practical salinity units, uh, very high. Indeed, uh, indeed. indeed. Uh. The lake lies at the center of a huge network of springs that come up through the faults in the Earth's crust. This lake is partially filled by springs like these here, which are very alkaline, very rich in sodium and in potassium. This one has a pH that is close to 11, so that's extremely alkaline water. And these waters determine the type of vegetation and the type of aquatic life in particular. Bizarrely, this forbidding environment enables Lake Natron to be an ideal nursery. This lake is a very important uh, wintering ground for many of the Palearctic migrants from Europe, as well as a very important breeding area for lesser flamingo. Two kilometers offshore is the Jalai mudflat, where the flamingos find the mud they need to build their nests. No predators can survive in the burning water that surrounds the site. The flamingos nest here because the lake protects their eggs. Not even spotted hyena can go out onto those mudflats. It's inhospitable for mammal populations. 75% of all the lesser flamingos in the world are born here. The pink birds even get their color from red cyanobacteria called spirulina that thrives in the toxic water. Bacteria are known to survive in extreme environments, but Lake Natron's water isn't friendly for much else. 
except for something that has evolved to overcome what other species cannot. A distinctive fish endemic to Lake Natron cannot be found anywhere else in the world, the Alcolapia. The waters of Lake Natron go from anoxic conditions where there is no oxygen to having, and the fish really have to overcome this. One way that they appear to do that is they facultatively air breathe. This means they come to the surface and gulp at the air, something that we've observed while we've been here. The scientists have realized that there are three subspecies of Alcolapias. Small differences in their mouths set them apart and reveal information about their respective habitats. We believe that potentially the different mouth morphs are allowing them to exploit an ecological niche, meaning they're able to feed in different ways. So this is Latilabris, named so because of its downward-facing mouth and large lips. These are used for ripping algae from the rocks. The second species we find that is mainly in the Southern Springs also is Endolani. And Endolani has this downward facing mouth and a different head morph. And finally, we have Alcalica. Alcalica has a terminal mouth, which means it ends at the end of its face. And this is beneficial for being a generalist feeder because it can feed from the substrate but also from the surface. And this is actually the species that we found to be most numerous and own more springs across the lake. And the current predictions of climate change, more lakes are going to be exposed to similar conditions as Lake Natron. With the increase in temperature, there's an increase in evaporation, which really changes the water chemistry. And by understanding the adaptations that we see in fish here in Lake Natron, more better at understanding how potentially other species will be evolving and changing. The lake was created around two million years ago, and it has continually changed. A new discovery about a mile from its shore may explain more about its evolution and that of the strange fish that inhabit it. These are fish bones. Fossilized fish bones, of course, which have formed a thin layer. It's a fish cemetery. For it to be so concentrated in time, just a few centimeters, there must have been an event which led to this massacre. The geological history here can be divided into two phases, with an ancestor of Lake Natron, then the formation of the escarpment of around 200 meters, which is just behind us and which separates us from the Lake Natron we know today. Then the old lake, which was once where we are now, fossilized in a way. Prehistoric Lake Natron was much bigger than the current lake, and it shows that eruptions occurred one after another a million years ago. An impressive lava flow covered the sediment that was home to part of this fish cemetery, likely responsible for the disappearance of the Alcalapia's ancestors. Here we are on the edge of some nascent tectonic plates with the Nubian plate and to the east, the Somalian plate. So these two plates are moving apart. It's a process that is in its early phase, a million years, two million years in this region. And if you extrapolate to a future in several tens of millions of years' time, then you might say the eastern part of Africa will have separated in two, with an ocean where the East African Rift Valley is today, an ocean like you see in the rest of the world. What we are interested in is returning to the origins of the ocean. Lake Natron is a natural laboratory where scientists can witness the phenomena that occurred when an ocean was formed. As tectonic shifts happen, it's likely that the Great East African Rift will widen to form a sea about the size of the Mediterranean. While geologists are seeing the genesis of an ocean, Lake Natron can also shed light on the astonishing capacity for adaptation within species. It's up to us to preserve it and to learn from its mysteries, which could prove critical for the well-being and overall survival of our planet.